Okay, so hey everyone, uh, it's been a while since I've made videos because um, this past semester was actually pretty tough. I've been overloading my semesters like 20, 22, 18 credit hours so I can graduate really fast and get back to work. So June 1st, I'll be back in New York working with everyone up in the office and I'll have help and things are going to go pretty good and fast. Um, so today I'm going to talk about some custom boxes, uh, Luminox updates, and then some life advice. Um, so the first thing is these boxes. Uh, years ago, I wanted to offer custom boxes, but they took too long to make. But technology has gotten a lot better since then. I've had better techniques. And this is these are the first boxes I've tested with this technique. Um, it's still a little translucent, um, but I'm going to improve that. That's an easy improvement. I'll just find some opaque plastic. But this is plastic, and it's smooth, and it's flush with the surface. Do you see the smoothness? Like, it's actually part of the thing. And I can get pretty good detail, and anyone can just send me an image and then I'll take that image and make a box out of it. Um, and like I said, these boxes are really fast to make, so we can make them and keep up with demand. Um, these boxes are friction locked, so I'll show you um, right there. There's a lot of friction, and it, it holds the caps together, so the cube doesn't fall out. And there's a gap between the, the case and the cube, so that if you were to drop this, the cube would be fine. And Here's a up-close quality picture of the box. Um, I like the, I did this because there's like a contrast. There's like the shiny sides and then there's the matte friction surface in the middle. Um, yeah, uh, try to get the light. I can't get the light to hit it just right. Anyways, um, and these are like smooth surfaces. And um, eventually in the long term, I could even put different colors in there. So I could have the sea blue um, blue and that orange just like the real thing, but that's like really far in the future. Um, we'll have to explore certain things. These are just, like I said, the first try of doing this technique. In the long run, I want to do this with like a really opaque white that matches this white and um, just crank these out really fast, have custom designs, or maybe even ship Luminox cubes in a Luminox box. So um, it still needs some work, like I said. So, oh, wrong one. This is just an early prototype. Um, um, I'm still prototyping. I don't know if everyone follows my Instagram, but I do. I've been averaging three to more prototypes per week. And with Luminox, I have to take a different direction. And I'll be talking about that in length in this video. So this is um, the latest. Actually, I, print, I made another one um, yesterday. But this is the most recent one. You can see these are tiles, but they're flush with the cube. They are, look at the orange side. When I rotate the cube, they are exactly flush with the surface. So this feels like a stickerless cube. Um, the thing with the tiles is you can choose any color you want. Basically, I have so much selection to plastic colors. Um, this is green. It looks a little dull in the lighting, but it's actually pretty bright. Same with yellow. Um, Everything's just standard on here. I tried to imitate old Moyu. Um, but yeah, so the cubes, it turns out there's only a very narrow range of features that can make a cube good. And do you, changing all the features custom would lead to a bad cube. So I was thinking with Luminox, what if we just make it like our own cube line? And what I really want to do is make cubes like video games. So you know how some games like Overwatch and, um, I don't know, online games that have a big user base and the game has to evolve as the, as the game user base evolves. So they have patch notes and change logs. So I want to have, every time there's a new iteration that's good, have a change log. So uh, change a certain feature that makes it better and make sure that each feature definitively always makes it a better feature and a better cube. We don't want to step backwards, and since everything is on the computer, we can have, if someone wants to buy an older version, we have we can give them that option. And each of these things, every time there's a big change, uh, there's going to be names and series, and you can go through and browse, and then let the user customize certain things. So there's still going to be customization. You can choose the base color. So this color is like a uh, reddish brown. I was just testing colors. Um, you can do green base with your tiles, blue cube with these tiles, um, black, gray, white, red, 
any base plastic. You could have ridges. Um, what else is custom? You can still custom tension, custom magnet, custom radius strength. There's still a huge amount of customizability and still a ton of ways to make your cube super unique. Um, I think recently I figured out how to make really good uh, glow-in-the-dark tiles. These aren't on there, but once I make one, I can show you an example. But there's still a huge amount of customizability while still maintaining good cube quality. So this cube, it cuts um, um, sometimes. There we go. That's not good. So this is still just a prototype. It doesn't cut very well. So the four cuts up, down, move that over, up, down. Um, this plastic is really, really cheap plastic. I got this for 30% of the cost. Uh, I, my other prototypes are made of better plastic. So one of the things is I have to source good plastic. Um, and the cool thing is there's a huge amount of customizability with the plastic. You can choose your additives and your speed. So if you want hard plastic, we have myriad options. If you want soft plastic, we can give you soft plastic. If you want a certain coating, so by default, these cubes are going to come with coatings. You can choose a coating. Um, there's still a huge amount of customizability, like I said. Um, so I'm going to source plastics, incrementally increase the design, do some small updates, improve corner cutting. Um, I guess this would cut. There, it's cutting now, but when I first wanted to cut, it wasn't cutting. Um, this cube is not good enough to release to the public, um, but I'm going to do a few turns. One more thing I wanted to mention is I'm slowly learning new things and using better tools. I've invested literally $8,000 into this thing and trying to get the tools to produce these things. Um, these tiles, they're fast to produce. Um, you can see the quality there of the tiles. Um, uh, let me show a different one. Uh, there you go. You can see the quality of the tiles. Like you see where the light shining on them. Um, there's just a lot more I have to do. It's probably going to take months before this is ready. Um, I still need more things. And it's going to take minimum $2,000 to bring this to market. And taxes kind of hurt me. So um, I need some funding from the company. So far, this has been like completely me funded. Um, mostly, I'm, well, we'll, we'll talk about that later. But no matter what, I'm going to bring this to the public. Um, let me see, is there anything else about Luminox I have to talk about? Um, I'm not sure. Um, you can probably hear that this is very dry and hard. The plastic is very hard. Um, I have a few other examples. Uh, maybe I'll show you the pieces. So this is the piece. Um, let me show you a corner. The cool thing about my corner is you see how that you can see through and you see those holes. Um, these pieces are ephemerally light. They're very, very, very light. I wanted to make a cube that's really, really light. Um, I still have to tweak some features, but you could even have... Um, yeah, weight is going to be one of the things that you can adjust. So you can make the walls of the cube thicker. So you can have a heavier cube that's more resistant and harder to break um, on impact and stuff like that. So um, even though I'm going to restrict some options to allow for a quality cube, there's still a huge amount of customizability. I'm saying that a lot because I really want to emphasize it. Okay, so I'm up to nine minutes. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about is uh, life advice. So the more I learn computer science, the more my mind is completely blown away. And the more I realize there's only actually... There's, people divide sciences into different things, chemistry, biology, psychology, computer science, but there is so much intermingling, there is so much commingling of knowledge between the, all sciences that you could even say divisions are completely fictional. People make those things to abstract the world, to make it easier to understand and easier to focus their mind to study. But so many things are mixed that I had no idea were mixed. Did you know there's chemistry in computer science? So um, in deep learning, there's a thing called a deep belief network. 
And a deep belief network is split into layers of things called restricted Boltzmann's machines. And Boltzmann is a guy who's really big in the chemistry world. And in these restricted Boltzmann machines, RBMs, they use something called the Gibbs free energy to make decisions. And when you layer these up, they can actually extract features through images and you can get really, really accurate computers looking at images and tell you what they are because they make these decisions in each layers and extract them down into a classifier and then the classifier makes the decision and it's kind of crazy. It's pretty nuts. The next thing is in machine learning, um, for information gain, there's a thing called entropy. And I was thinking like, is that the same thing as entropy from chemistry? And it's, it's insane how so many topics are intermingled. And the biggest thing that computer science has taught me is psychology. Um, maybe not directly, and I don't want to offend any psychologists, but when you do machine learning and you think to yourself, how does a human make a decision? How, what goes into making a decision? What goes into classifying, learning, all these things, and how can we emulate that with a computer? I didn't do these. This is what I'm learning that people did many years before me, and it's, it's absolutely nuts especially computer vision like people can see and pick out patterns faster uh, time-wise than a computer and a lot of these things are still unknown but people have to think and break down these things so they can make these these algorithms and classifiers and it's completely nuts um, but one of the things is I learned that people don't behave much different than some computer learning algorithms like Sometimes people are just so deterministic and they go completely on autopilot, myself involved. Like when, when a model is trained, it makes decisions. And when people are trained to an extent, they stop learning. And there's this thing, I don't know if it's called the backfire effect, backlash. In psychology, when you tell someone an opinion or a thought that is against what they believed previously, they'll actually double down and try to defend their erroneous, incorrect opinions rather than accept the new, better opinion. And it they'll reinforce their wrong beliefs and just become more toxic than they were, even if it would be better for everyone if they just took the new idea. And this is a really common thing. Um, psychologically, I didn't understand why people used to do it, but after learning backlash and thinking that people are just trained classifier models, they're just fitting data and they don't wanna take new data, I started to make the combination. So many people just live their lives on autopilot after a certain age and they completely stop learning. And some people take advantage of this, especially things like if, <clears throat> if you look up social engineering and marketing tricks, people are just so deterministic, especially myself. If I see an ad, you can bet if it was a good ad, I'm going to go out and buy that thing. And I'm like, I, there's so many times I've ended up at Taco Bell after saying, I'm not hungry but that advertisement was really good. I use Adblock, but sometimes I'll watch ads because of their production value. It's so stupid, but because they know that human nature is so deterministic, people can do so many tricks to just get people to do things that they subconsciously didn't even decide. And basically I say all of this to say, don't be another deterministic model. The things that separate humans from computers in the moment, that is, um, we don't know about the long-term future, but in this moment, people are better at pattern recognition, learning, and fitting information and determining whether or not something is good or bad or correct or wrong or they should take an action or not based on very limited data. Computers, they need huge data sets to make accurate decisions, but humans, they only get one life and most of them waste a lot of their time and they don't spend it learning. And I don't, I don't, I'm not talking about school, I'm talking about learning, learning and changing your models. And we make these decisions off of such tiny limited data and we are actually able to make really good decisions most of the time. Uh, comparably, like we don't, our data sets are very small and we should be using that to our advantage. We should be using our small limited data sets to make decisions and not just go on autopilot all the time. Like really consider all the things that are coming into you from the world and actually think about these things. It sounds really simple, but after I realized this, I've been thinking about my decisions a lot. Like, even the way I walk, do I always walk this way? Turns out, yeah, I am. Is, am I doing this just because I'm on autopilot? How many other things I do are on autopilot, such as 
which side of my mouth I chew on, um, habits like walking upstairs, things like that. It's all just completely deterministic things that are on autopilot. And I think life is more fun when you enjoy all the small things, all the tiny things. Um, and that's it. That's what I learned from computer science today. Uh, soon I'll have two degrees and it'll be great. Um, but yeah, that should be it. Uh, see you guys. I hope I'm going to send out prototypes in about two months. Probably launch in the fall. We'll see. Uh, gotta get started in New York first. Well, hopefully I'll have an update for everyone soon. Maybe next month, but I mean, hopefully sooner. So see y'all guys next video.